So a company called Mingda sent me their Goldfish X 3D printer, and I'm going to check it out and see how it is and if it's worth your money. So let's get this opened up and get started. So here's everything on the box. There's a user's manual, some razor blades, a USB drive, the top cover for the Z-axis with a bearing, the power supply, and the build plate. There's also a pair of latex gloves and a mask, along with one strainer for resin. And then there's the rest of the printer with a vat and the acrylic enclosure. This printer is using a thicker linear rail for the Z-axis and what looks like a standard lead screw. You do have to install this top cap that has a bearing in it, but it's easy and you just kind of push it on. The build plate is kind of weird. It has a top plastic piece that slides on, and the rest of it looks like aluminum. And the actual build surface has a little bit of a texture to it. But before I can install the build plate, I need to turn the machine on. So I'm just going to plug it in and turn it on with this tiny little switch on the back. And with the machine on, I can use the control panel in the front to raise the Z-axis. And this is going to allow me to put the build plate on. I do need to remove the vat so I can level the build plate. And you could do this with just the two thumb screws on the sides. With that off, I notice that there is a screw just sitting inside of the Z limit switch, which shouldn't be there. And after looking over the entire machine, there's no screws missing. So this must have just fell in the box, I guess. And if I would have homed it like that, this little part would have hit on it and probably bent. So the vat on this printer is a nice thick plastic. A lot of times these are aluminum, but plastic works fine. But if we look on the bottom side, there's a little bit of a problem where the FUP sheet is bolted down. There's two cracks on either corner. And I don't think this is gonna cause a problem, but it's not a good look at the same time. And since we're on the topic of the FUP sheet, you can only get theirs. You can't get the normal replacements because the outside plastic is part of theirs. When most other companies have a metal frame that allows you to just change out the sheet so you could buy them from wherever you'd like, usually in a lot higher quantities for a lot less. But anyways, I need to level the build plate and I just need to loosen this screw here to allow it to move around and just take a normal sheet of A4 printer paper and place it over the screen and then just home the build plate. This will lower everything down and make sure your build plate is perfectly gapped and then you can tighten it down and you're pretty much good to go. And I could put the vat back on. If you have any 3D printer, make sure that you screw the vat back on. I've seen people forget and they'll come back to it stuck to a build plate just sitting up in the air. This printer didn't come with any resin, so I'm going to be using some resin from Frozen. Whenever you work with resin, you're gonna to wanna to use gloves and the ones that came with this machine are most likely latex and latex gloves will not protect you against most resins. So only use nitrile or vinyl gloves like I'm going to use. So I'm just going to fill up my vat to the max line so I don't overflow this and start a test print. And whenever you're printing, make sure you have your acrylic dome on so no UV light gets in. So since this is called the Goldfish, I thought it'd be only fitting to print a Magikarp as my first test print. And I got this file from someone over on Instagram. They have a ton of different Pokemon related files that you can buy and use however you like really. So I highly suggest checking them out if you're interested. And I'll have links to that account in the description below. All right, it's been about four hours and here's my print. From the initial look at it, it looks like everything came out fine. And this is 300% scale from the original model. So to get this off, you would normally use a scraper, but they didn't supply one with this printer. They only gave you razor blades. And that doesn't really work too well with this without damaging your plate, so I'm going to use a scraper of my own, and as you can see, it comes off really easily. So I suggest including one of these, or if you end up getting one of these printers, buy some of these. But anyways, the Magikarp is gonna take a bath in my cleaning setup for about eight minutes to get off any excess resin. So as I wait for that to clean up, I'm gonna clean up my build plate, but then I realized my build plate has hardened resin on it. And this is most likely due to my studio lights and them putting off UV light. So I need to scrape all this off. So you need to be very careful when working with this stuff and make sure your lights aren't too bright or put off too much UV. So this is no fault of the printer itself, but I'm happy that I have the razor blade so I can actually take this off now. So after all the washing and removing the supports, I need to put my Magikarp into a UV curing station and I put it in there for about six minutes. And after all that, here it is. And it looks like it came out really nice. And I know this isn't the most detailed or impressive thing to print, so I'm going to take some stuff from Arch Villain Games and print that. And here they are after cleaning up all the supports on them. And as you can see, they're way more detailed. So overall, the printer does a good job at fine details from what I've seen and more chunkier models. 
and it basically has the same specs as other 2K mono printers. So it does have a larger physical build plate than the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, but they have pretty much exactly the same build area. Besides, the Mars 2 Pro has about 10 millimeters more in the Z-axis. So one thing I'm a little worried about with this printer is the actual Z-axis support. This entire thing is all plastic, and any other printer I've ever used, this is always made from metal or aluminum. And really my main concern with it is it's going to have flex to it. I also don't like that the build plate hanger is plastic as well. And based on personal preference, having the USB and this tiny little power button in the back is really inconvenient. It'd be a lot better if they're just on the front, or at least on the side where you can easily see them and get to them. So overall, what do I think of this printer? Well, it does a good job at printing. And it happens to be in the cheaper end of things when it comes to 2K mono printers right now. But it looks like the market is changing and they're releasing 4K, 6K, and 8K printers. And you can get a 4K printer for not much more than you would this one. But the resolution bump might not matter to some people, especially for the $100 difference between this and a 4K printer. And I think the miniatures that came off of this look great as they are. So it's going to be really up to you and what your needs are. But I do still have the concerns about the FEP sheets and the plastic build to this. But if you're willing to buy their FEP sheets and you're not worried about the plastic like I am, then this might be the printer for you. But anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, let me know if you think the name of this printer is as dumb as I think it is. If you found this video to be helpful whatsoever, leave a like, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.